Good morning from a very rainy Holland. My name is Didi. I'm from My Crochet Project and I'm making a video about how to crochet a Tunisian crochet in the round. Uh, I explain the technique and I will work um, a, a full pattern from my rainbow hearts pattern, which you see, uh, which you can see at the start of this uh, video, what it is. Uh, I started this year at the uh, crochet along for the Ipsa blanket. It's a, a Facebook uh, followed a group about this uh, project and it's from knittenotter.com. Um, it was a complete new technique for me and I loved it so very, very much that, um, uh, well, uh, I do nothing else than Tunisian in the round at this moment. Uh, I made a, I've made a, a pattern. That's our little dog you're hearing. He wants to, uh, or she wants to tell something uh, as well. Uh, I made the first pattern. It's the rainbow heart. I posted it uh, in the in the group of the Ipsa blankets, and there were so many people enthusiastic about this pattern and asking me questions about it. That I um, uh, I asked uh, the lady who made uh, the Ipsa blanket if it was okay to make a video about uh, a little explanation about the technique. And in this video, I will also crochet the full uh, pattern of the rainbow uh, heart. Um, so let's get started. First, with what do we need to make um, uh, such a, a pattern? Uh, well, this is a hexagon uh, pattern. Uh, and with uh, a combination of a few hexagons, you can make a full blanket, which is the Ipsa call. Um, I uh, am making the call in these two um, uh, yarns. It's the Scheepjes Art Tribe and it's the universe from the hobby side. It's fingering yarn. Um, for me, it's important to take the fingering yarn uh, in case you, need, you, you take a DK or a, a thicker yarn, the blanket will turn uh, rather big. Uh, and I like to put as many hexagons in this blanket as possible. So that's why I take the, the yarn uh, uh, the lady advised uh, for, from the call. And it's a fingering yarn. So these two I use. Uh, she also advised the Denise uh, crochet, uh, Tunisian crochet uh, hook set. I ordered it, uh, it's from America, so it had to come a long way, uh, but that worked uh, completely uh, fine. Uh, and I have to say these hooks uh, work real, real nice, uh, but they are plastic hooks and I don't really like plastic. So I ordered uh, uh, new uh, hooks uh, from Henrietta's hooks. I don't know if you know them, but it's a Facebook site and he has a, uh, uh, website as well. I will uh, mention it in the uh, below uh, this video, uh, but they are not here yet. So when they are here, I will work with those uh, hooks, I think. But in this video, I will use this hooks, these hooks. Um, I uh, I use a four millimeter, four millimeter, and a four point four point five millimeter. It's the other way around. Four four point five. Uh, it's four point five. 4.5 what i'm talking about for the uh, the the front side and for the back side i use the four millimeter i've tried uh, with one size uh, for both sides but uh, that doesn't work very well for me uh, the loops are too big and it's not very neat and this way it's a uh, very neat work uh, and i use one stitch marker uh, I will show you in a while, but it's it's possible to use a stitch marker in every corner. So then you need six. But for me, uh, I'm only uh, th that's too much. In the, in the beginning, there are just a few stitches. And then I think I'm just working with stitch markers instead of my crochet hook. So I decided to take one. But it's in, important that you uh, count in a very good way uh, then, because otherwise it's, it goes wrong. Well, let's get started. Round one. I use the white yarn for the front side and the colored yarn for the back side. It is the most easy way uh, to do the Tunisian in the round technique. But when you have done a few hexagons, you can turn it around and take the dark yarn in front and the, the white yarn uh, in the back. But you will, you will notice that that is a little bit harder to do. Um, okay, the first uh, round is um, the magic ring, the magic loop, the magic ring. 
everybody does that uh, in another way, but I will show you how I do it. Uh, I put the yarn over my finger like uh, this with the little tail in front. I turn it around and make a hoop and make a cross here. And then I get my hook. Let's see if I have the, the good one. And then I do the hook. Uh, I put the hook under the yarn and over the yarn and get it through. I make a little twist and get it here through the hook. And then we have the magic ring. I will do it again. A little tail in front. Make a cross like this under it, over it, twist and get the yarn and then we have the first stitch. The pattern says um, magic, uh, magic ring. Um, the pattern is for one sixth of the hexagon of course so you have the only way uh, you have to make this is make six times the pattern. Uh, so that means one stitch in the magic ring in the pattern means six stitches because you have to uh, crochet the pattern six times so this is the first stitch this is the second third fourth fifth and six. We have six stitches uh, on the hook for the first round. Then to finish the first round, we take the dark yarn. We make a little loop on it. We take our work and take it to the other side of the hook. Turn it around. And we put this little dark loop at the hook. And then just like in normal Tunisian crochet, we are going to pull it through. First through one loop. Take care, you take the right one and not the short one. So this one, pull the yarn, get it through, pull the yarn, get it through, pull the yarn, get it through. We don't continue to the end because uh, the stitches fall off the hook very easily. Um, it's important to keep three stitches uh, at the hook every round, every time you, you pull back at the back side because the dark yarn is for the back side. Uh, two white ones and one uh, dark one and then you know you are in the end and then we turn the hook again and get your work to the other side again. That is the first round. The second round, we take our work again, and in this uh, stadium, the stitch marker comes in. We just pull the magic loop through. We close the magic loop, that's a better word. And now we have here the dark yarn and we have here the white uh, yarn. I'm working at the front side now, so I take the white yarn. The pattern says in row two, a knit stitch and a full stitch, and that's six times. So I start with the first knit stitch. Well, exp I explained the stitches in the other video, but I will take it slow so you can uh, see it. Here's the little knot of the dark yarn where we started with, and here is the first loop. Uh, well, the knit stitch was insert the hook in the loop so i will do that here we have the little tail of the start i put it over to the other side here is the white yarn to work with and i get it through to make the first knit stitch well here comes the stitch marker because every first stitch of the first uh, the first stitch of the round uh, so the in the first pattern of six i uh, place the stitch, mark, the stitch marker at uh, the loop so I know where my rounds start. So this is the first stitch. 
after the knit stitch there it says a full stitch so i have to look carefully maybe zoom in a little bit so you can see it even better the knit stitch is in and i need the full stitch now pull the yarn tight every time you have to check if your loop isn't like this because then you get a very large stitch always pull it a little like this like this and for the full stitch i have to go in between these two stitches so here's the loop of the second i see where my yarn is from the first one and i insert it here to make the full stitch so now i have a knit stitch and a full stitch i do it once again a knit stitch in the first loop and after that first loop in between i put in the full stitch i have to say the first few rounds are a little bit hard uh, to do when you are in round four or five you will notice it's far more easy to work but the beginning it's a bit difficult um i have done two uh, patterns the two out of six and for me that's enough to put it back to the other side and to do the the back side so i turn my work around because the hook can't uh, can't fix more uh, you, you see that here's my darker yarn and the loop is rather big so first i pull it a little tight and i just take off the stitches like in normal tunisian and it's important that you take one dark loop and one white loop don't take two because then um, well the pattern won't uh, won't go and you you miss stitches in the end so it's a bit hard like i said in the first few rounds but it will get easier when you just continue like this and like this i have three three stitches left and i turn my work again when i zoom in like this i have to check that i show the stitches and you don't see just my hands but i think it will go the right way so i've turned again i need four times more uh, i need to do the pattern four times more uh, it's a little bit hard to see the stitches now but we will find it this is the first one just check if you have the first one and when you use all the stitch markers in all corners in all corners you can see it more easy but well like i said i hate it when there are six stitch markers in such a little work so one knit stitch one in between one knit stitch and one in between and then I go to the back side again. So uh, I complete the round and then I will be back for the third. I've completed the round. Here's the dark yarn. Here's the white yarn and the two ends and the stitch marker. We get it off to start the third uh, round. And this, the third round says, says one knit stitch, one reverse stitch and one full stitch. So we start with the knit stitch. So you can see here is the first loop i will zoom it in and you can see it better so you take the first loop the first knit stitch and in the first stitch we'll place the stitch marker i've done the knit stitch then we go to the first reverse stitch please check carefully first knit stitch this is the next one and when you you are not sure where the second one is you turn your work a little and you see here the cord for the or the yarn for the from your first stitch and then you see the white loop in the back and you know this is the second stitch and because it's a reverse stitch we take it at the back side like this pull the yarn through always keep your yarn tension uh, in mind uh, especially in the first few rounds uh, so we made the second stitch the reverse stitch and the third stitch is a full stitch so that means it has to be in between those stitches so again at the back side you see the yarn of the stitch and the the little bulb the white bulb of the second stitch now you see why it's imp important to use the white yarn for the front row because it's far more easy to see what you're doing and you pull your hook 
you put your hook just in between to do the full stitch um, and it's important that the dark yarn is always on top of your work if you know what I mean so the stitch is under the dark yarn so this is the first uh, section of the pattern I continue with the second section because for me it works well if I take two sections uh, every time at my hook before I turn my work and pull it back so I have to do three times two sections obviously to uh, finish uh, the hexagon so I've made the next stitch oh, Minnie is uh, very busy with her little ball Minnie is a Pomeranian pup of seven months now and uh, it's morning here so that's the time she plays uh, she likes to play um, she's really sweet the second stitch uh, and the third stitch is the full stitch just in between. So now I have two sections at my hook and that's the time I turn my work around, pull it back to the other side of the hook. Take care that my stitch marker is in front when you turn, uh, when you've turned your work, pull the dark yarn a little and then take off the stitches like the normal Tunisian way take care you take one stitch every time it will go uh, a little quicker uh, look this is what I do when I do it too quick I take two stitches and again it's a bit hard in the first few rounds when we are in round four or five or whatever it will go much easier so this was the uh, the pull off side the back side of the first two sections I turn it back again and I will continue to finish the round okay round four um, when you are at the end of the round like uh, round three and you come to the end and you miss one stitch then um, it's very likely that you missed the stitch just after the start of each section so in this case uh, in round three it was a knit stitch knit stitch reverse stitch full stitch when you miss one at the end uh, probably you uh, you've put the reverse stitch too soon and uh, i mean by that when you place your knit stitch like this was the knit stitch um then the 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 loop of the reverse stitch is just after it. Uh, probably you missed that one. Or what is also possible, you end with a full stitch, knit stitch, reverse stitch, full stitch. Um, and when you end with the full stitch and you need the knit stitch after that, you skip one. And well, when you skip one, you miss one in the end. So please, in the first few rounds, I can't say it enough, check every stitch if it is at the good place because then you will finish in the right way uh, round four get the stitch marker off and round four says um, the corner stitches a reverse stitch and the corner stitches again so we start with the first two corner stitches uh, well just find my loop I this is what I mean I zoom in a bit that you can see it a little bit further my last stitch was a full stitch so it was in between it looks like I used this stitch and I will go there but that's the wrong stitch because it was a full stitch this is my first stitch so I start with the uh, the first corner stitches and I explained those in my other video but the corner stitches is start with a twisted simple stitch I do it like this and then after that uh, I need the twisted knit stitch but because it's the first uh, of the round I place my stitch marker in this stitch first before I continue oh, just put the paper away uh, then pull the dark yarn a bit to the top to see where you have to insert your hook and it's here is the white loop here is the white loop in the back and I have to place my hook just in here to make the reverse knit stitch again 
I do it slow for the first few times, but in the other video where I explain the stitches, you can see it uh, again. So the first two stitches uh, I've made for the start of the round, one reverse stitch. So I have to um, look at the back of my work to see where the first loop is. Well, here it is. When you look at the back, you can see it in, um, you can't miss them actually. The reverse stitch and then I need in the next a stitch the corner stitches of the left side and the corner stitches at the other side of my work are just a knit stitch and a simple stitch after that. And then I have one side, one section of the six made. Um, I continue with the second one to show it once again. These rows are real short so it doesn't matter. To show both, I just pull the loop a little bit up because for the twisted stitches it's sometimes hard to get it, but now I hope I wasn't out of uh, the view, but I think I'm in again. One twisted, a simple stitch, one twisted knit stitch, check the back for the second stitch and it's here for the reverse stitch. And make the corner stitches again like this and like this and we finished two sections and we turn our work to pull off the stitches I will show it once more and after this I won't show this uh, section anymore because it's every time the same actually so just pull off very easy and very gently <laughs> the stitches okay i will continue to finish round four and i'll and then i'll be back i hope i wasn't out of uh, reach because i zoomed in a bit but i think you could see exactly what i was doing in round four so we're back in row, row five just a little bit the shape will appear a little bit from the hexagon if you look in the corners, the six corners. Well, row five says uh, one twisted simple stitch, three reverse stitches and one simple stitch. So we start with the twisted uh, simple stitch. And this is such a situation that maybe you miss the stitch because it's here a little bit in the back. In the first few rounds, you have to be aware that you take the right stitch. Otherwise you miss in the end when you finish you think well where is my last stitch well that's the one you missed i place my stitch marker back to see what i'm doing and then after the twisted simple stitch three reverse stitches so the first is here i have to dig it out the second is there the third is there and then end the first section of the pattern with a simple stitch second part a twisted simple stitch three reverse stitches one two three and one simple stitch to end the row two sections done. I will show you one time more the back part because we have a, lit, a little more stitches now to see and then I can um, remind you to pull the yarn to keep the tension of the yarn in mind. Two loops, one dark and one wi uh, white loop and pull it all off. <laughs> Hi Minnie! Hi Minnie! Look at my dog. Can you see her? Oh, she's over there. Hi Minnie! Minnie! Hello Ivy! She's cute, isn't it? <laughs> then you can see uh, what you're hearing in, uh, in the background. Well, the last few stitches of row five. Uh, we have left two white ones, pull it tight, and one a red one. 
and then we continue in row six in a while. I uh, finish my row five. Well, we'll be back in row six with a little bit of sunshine. Row six. The stitch marker is off yet. Two corner stitches, three reverse stitches and two corner stitches. So we start with the two corner stitches. The first one. And we place the stitch marker. The second one. Always a little bit hard to find, but we can do that. Three rever reverse stitches. One. And two. And three. And two corner stitches again. They are a bit close to one another, so be aware you only use one stitch. The two corner stitches. This is the first part. It's a little shadow, isn't it? Because of the sun. I won't complain about the sun, but while we're filming, it's a little bit hard to see. Look at it. It answers my question. <laughs> I don't know how the weather is at your place, but here it's windy and rainy at the moment. So a little bit of sun. Well, I like it. I won't complain, as I said. Three reverse stitches. And the two corner stitches for row six. And we completed the first two sections of this round. I will continue and come back to you at row 7. Look at our little hexagon starting to show up. The start of row 7 and I decided to show you from uh, now on one section instead of two sections. Of course you can repeat the section if you want to see it again. So we start row 7 right now and the pattern says one corner stitch, five reverse stitches and one corner stitch. And when we have one corner stitch, we have to twist it. Simple stitch to do. Five reverse stitches. Always digging out the first one. One, two, three, four and five. And one corner stitch. You see the, that's nice to show you as well. You see the corner stitches appear in the six sections. I think they are lovely, aren't they? Well, I continue to uh, finish row seven and I'll be back at row eight. And I'll finish row seven. As you probably noticed, I forgot to put my stitch marker in so I didn't have to get it out <laughs> now but uh, I will try to uh, put it in uh, again because it's a little bit harder to see where what you're doing when you don't uh, place it at the right place. Uh, a little trick when you forget to put it in you always end with two stitches uh, at your hook so you can count back where it had to be and uh, the further you go you see the corners uh, quite clear now so you can see what you're doing but well when you're not uh, confident enough uh, about uh, that please place the stitch marker and when you don't when you're not comfortable enough with one stitch marker place one in every corner and then you never can miss uh, what you're doing around eight it starts with two corner stitches one reverse stitch three knit stitches, one reverse and two corner stitches. I've made the first corner stitch and put the stitch marker in and I will do the second now. It's here, one reverse stitch, three knit stitches, one reverse stitch. I'm a little bit quicker now, but I think you know what I'm doing. I want to show you the whole pattern so I don't have to do every stitch very slow, I guess. Well, as you can see, row eight will look like this. 
I will finish it and I'll be back at row 9. And finished row 8. We continue with row 9. One corner stitch, one reverse stitch, five knit stitches, one reverse stitch and one corner stitch. Let's start. One corner stitch. Place the stitch marker in. One reverse stitch. <laughs> Minnie is hearing something. One reverse stitch. Five knit stitches. One, two. She sounds dangerous, doesn't she? Minnie. Come on, meisje. Come eens kijken. Good so. <laughs> She's curious. One reverse stitch and one corner stitch. Well, I see in a minute what she's barking about because she doesn't bark too much. Finished row nine. Now I really finished row nine. Starting with row ten. And we start in row 10 with two corner stitches. That's the first one. A little bit digging for the second one. Okay, we have three knit stitches. One, two, we have one reverse stitch, three knit stitches, oh. be aware that you stay between the dark, the dark of the former row and the dark of the last row, when you do the knit stitch your hook has to be just in between. So it's good to show you how it doesn't have to do it, how you doesn't have to do that stitch. Uh, three knit stitches and then the last one, uh, two corner stitches. And that is the first section of row 10. Now we're back for uh, row 11. I did something wrong in uh, the first uh, attempt to uh, film row 11. So I have the last part of the row 11 to show you what to do in this row. Uh, we start with one corner stitch. Then we continue with three knit stitches. Three reverse stitches. It's a very easy row actually. So easy that I did it wrong. <laughs> three reverse stitches, three knit stitches. and one corner stitch. So that is row 11 finally. And then we continue with row 12. Row 12 starts again with two corner stitches. The first one and the second one. In row 12, we continue with two knit stitches, five reverse stitches, one, two, three, four, five. If you think, what what's she chewing? It isn't me, it's Mini something chewing. Minnie is chewing, I don't know what, one of her toys. Well, with a pup of seven month, months old, you it's, it's not possible to uh, film something without any noise, but well, it's a little bit of fun, isn't it? Well, what I have now is the section, the last part of section 11 on my hook and the first part of section 12, 12 on my hook. So I turn my work around to pull both sections off and I forgot my stitch marker again so I have to replace that in a minute maybe I can show you how I do it when I forgot it it's nice to see as well just 
to remove. Ini mini, what are you doing? What do you mini? What are you playing around with? Well, nearly at the end. Three stitches left. Then turn my work again. I'm back here. I know I did one part of section 12. Here are my corners. You see here are the two corner stitches at the start of row 12. So this is my first stitch. Well, I will continue this round and come back to you at row 13. Well, 13. We are at one third of the hexagon already. It goes quick, but the beginning is quick and at the end the rows are a bit longer, obviously. So that will take some more time, but it's fun to do. And I like it when the rows are a bit longer because, well, you, then you don't have to twist and turn that often anymore. Um, we start with one, uh, one corner stitch and then after the first corner stitch we do two knit stitches and we are going to do seven reverse stitches. One, two, three, four, five. six and seven two knit stitches again and one corn stitch the point of the heart is visible already and my stitch marker one two three first stitch there is the first of the pattern sometimes it's easier at the back, the back side and now it isn't easy at all, of course. Yes, there it is. Okay, I'll be back at row 14. And we're back at row 14. Row 14 starts with a double corner stitch. So the twisted simple stitch and the twisted knit stitch. After that, we need one knit stitch and then nine reverse stitches so that's a whole long way one two three four five six you don't even have to think at this while <laughs> eight and nine and then we and with one knit stitch and of course the double corner stitch for this row 14. And then we continue the round and I'll be back at you at row 15. So we're back for row 15. Row 15 starts with one corner stitch. One corner stitch and then one knit stitch, four reverse stitches, three, four, and then three knit stitches in the middle, four stitches to continue. <laughs> Four, four reverse stitches, one knit stitch, and one corner stitch. That is row 15. And then we'll see Mini. What are you doing, Mini? Mini is hiding her little chew. Mini! Mini! What's up, you die? Mini! <laughs> well, you see me back at row 16. So, look at this. Round 15 done, up to round 16. 
and 16 starts with two corner stitches. So this is the first. The second. And then we need in this row to start with three reverse stitches. Then we continue with seven knit stitches. One, two, three, four. There's a little plush in my yarn. Four and four is in the middle. Five, six, seven, and then of course three reverse stitches as in this pattern every first half is the same as the second half and in this row as i said two corner stitches oh look at this i really love doing this i hope you feel the same but for me this is so much fun to do i see you back in row 17 and we're back at row 17 Row 17 starts with one corner stitch, three reverse stitches, nine knit stitches, one, two, three, four, a little bit extra yarn five and the fifth is in the middle again six seven eight nine and three reverse stitches three reverse stitches and the last corner stitch which is a simple stitch and this is row 17 I will continue and come back at row 18 and we're back at row 18 row 18 starts with a double corner stitch The first one and that one is wrong take care you don't have a full stitch instead of a corner stitch pull it up well what am I doing this one look and now we have the corner stitch two corner stitches for row 18 then two four six eight nine eleven knit stitches no that's wrong i'm sorry two reverse stitches first i think i need a lunch break <laughs> and then 11 knit stitches i certainly do need a lunch break one <laughs> two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a whole long row with knit stitches. Two reverse stitches again, and at the end of the row, there were two corner stitches in this part of the pattern so here we are the start of row 18 I'll finish that one okay got my lunch so ready for tour 19 get stitch marker first 
while working on it. It's a little bit curling up, but um, I will block it in the end and then that's completely gone. Uh, row, nine, row 19, I'm sorry, starts with uh, one corner stitch. And then we continue with two reverse stitches again. One, I had to dig that one out, two. Then we continue with six knit stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as always, I forget the stitch marker. So now I think about it. I put it in, I put it at the back. Okay, six knit, stitch, knit stitches and then one reverse. Six knit again. And then two reverse stitches. One, two, and one corner stitch. Here the little bump of the heart which is inside appears. So this is row 19. I continue and I'll be back with row 20. Okay, row 20. <coughs> We start row 20 with two corner stitches. Then two reverse stitches. Then five knit stitches. One, two, Three, four, five, three reverse stitches. And then we can repeat. Let's see where I have to put it in here. One, two, three, four. Five and the two reverse stitches at the end and the two corner stitches. The first section of a row twenty. Okay, row twenty finished. Up to row twenty one. <coughs> we start with one corner stitch in row 21. Let's see where we are. Again, two reverse stitches to start with. One, two, then five. You can think a little bit what is coming, isn't it? Four, five and then to go on with the little heart inside also five reverse stitches let's keep the glitter yarn downstairs <laughs> downstairs at the pattern in front doesn't matter really but when you zoom in like this you see everything you're doing two reverse stitches and one corner stitch oh. so in this row we have one corner stitch two reverse stitches five knit five reverse five knit two reverse and a corner stitch Okay, finished round 21 up to round 22. It goes quick, isn't it? Row 22. We've made more than half a hexagon now. Yeah. This row starts with 
two, that's a surprise, isn't it? Two corner stitches. And then two reverse stitches. Oh, I have to dig this one up. Take care, you have only one loop at your hook. Okay, four knit stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then we have seven reverse stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we continue with four knit stitches, two, three, four, and at the end, two reverse stitches as it is the heart, the, the border of the heart. Two border stitches and again I forgot my stitch marker. One, two, three, the fourth stitch is the start of row 22. So now it's in. Okay. Okay, row 23. It's the wrong way. Be aware that you take the right hook for the front side and the right hook for the back side. 23 starts with one corner stitch. And after that one, two reverse stitches. Oh well, the first one is real low, but I can dig it out. One, two, <clears throat> then four knit stitches. One, two, three, and four. Nine reverse stitches. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four knit stitches. It's opposite this one, so I need to go to that one. One, two, three. Four, the two reverse and at the end the one corner stitch which is a just a simple stitch in the end oh I was putting the yarn and it went wrong okay row 23 I will continue this one and come back at 24 row 24 I did uh, this one but something went wrong with making the film so i will show you row 24 in the second section of this pattern row 24 starts with two corner stitches <clears throat> it's my first youtube tutorial so well it certainly won't be perfect <laughs> uh, two corner stitches four knit stitches here's the first one two, three, four, no, do it again because I, I say I need two reverse stitches but I won't, I didn't make them, so two reverse stitches, one, two, three, four knit stitches, that's better, nine reverse stitches, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you can see what you have to do when you do something wrong because I'm sure 
that happens at home. I make lots of mistakes, so. But it's nice when you see them, when you still can fix it. And when you don't, well, then there's always a solution. And own design doesn't have to be perfect, does it? Uh, I made the two reverse stitches and then two corner stitches at the end of the row. And because I've made the first one, we have two sections on the hook now. And this, these hooks show, that's nice to show you, because there is a little uh, bend in the, in the plastic cord. But then you can see what you're doing. Row 24. Row 25. Row 25. <clears throat> we start with just one corner stitch. One corner stitch for row 25. And then after that one we are doing three reverse stitches. One, two, three. Three. And then four knit stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then we split up the heart with four reverse stitches. One knit stitch and four reverse stitches. Four knit stitches, and three reverse stitches, and one corner stitch for this row 25. The little white bullet in the center of the heart is appearing. Row 25. I will finish this one. Okay, rows 26 coming up. <coughs> row 26 and row 26 starts with two corner stitches. I've just had a walk with a mini, so I'm a bit... <sighs> if you hear me, that's why. It's really nice now outside, the sun is shining a little bit, the rain is gone. So it's good to be out. One, two, three, two, nearly two, three reverse stitches. <clears throat> and then five knit stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Then we continue with two reverse stitches, three knit stitches, and two reverse stitches, and five, three, four, five knit stitches, three reverse stitches, and then the two corner stitches. When you're up to row 26, I think you have to confirm that it's so relaxing this. So relaxing doing it. Lovely, isn't it? It's only a half I see here at the video, but well, you can see how it's going. Row 26. Okay, up to row 27. It starts with one corner stitch and then three reverse stitches. I had to count <laughs> nine knit stitches. One, two, three, Four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. It sounds great because I'm just in the middle now. One reverse stitch. And then nine knit stitches again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the three reverse stitches with the one corner stitch. And that will be row 27. And that was row 27. Look, the tiny little heart in the middle is done. Up to row 28. And row 28 starts with two corner stitches. Minnie is playing with a little ping pong ball. <laughs> Her second name is Messi. We call her Messi because she adores all kind of balls. It's so sweet to see when she's playing around. Well, we start with three reverse stitches. And after that, we have again, yes, again, nine knit stitches. One, two, three. Four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. And then we have, I see, I forgot it in the last row because we had nine stitches and one reverse stitch and one way or another i forgot the reverse stitch in that row oh dear nine knit stitches well when you forget something you can decide two things you can get the whole thing out but i think i will keep it that way it's just one stitch in the middle a little bit frogging doesn't matter, does it? It depends on how, um, on what place you did it wrong, but I, I decide this place is not very bad. Okay, oh no, it were two. It was a double corner stitch. Okay. This is row 28. Well, the one section of 28 and I'll finish it up here. Row 29. One corner stitch and one knit stitch is the start of 29. Three reverse stitches and then eight knit stitches. In the center there are three reverse stitches. And then again eight <laughs> knit stitches impossible to make a quiet video <laughs> how many do i have i already have eight and then three reverse stitches one knit stitch and one corner stitch row 29 really fast but we're up to row 30 and we have to go till 39 so nine rows to go two corner stitches in this uh, row 
and I was looking at row 39, but that's not a good one. It's row 30. Two corner stitches, one knit stitch, and the three reverse stitches of the round of the heart. Seven knit stitches. Three reverse stitches, no, five reverse stitches in the middle, in the center. Five reverse stitches in the center. We have, oh, this is not good. I split the yarn. The, what is it? Seven knit stitches, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three reverse stitches, one knit, and the double. stitch at the corner. Row 30. Row 31. Let's start with that one. Row 31 is one corner stitch. And after that three knit stitches three reverse and four knit stitches four knit stitches four reverse stitches one knit stitch in the middle and again four reverse stitches four knit stitches and then three reverse stitches And the three knit stitches in the end of this row and one corner stitch that will be row 31 and we continue with row 32 and row 32 starts with two knit stitches again no not two knit stitches two corner stitches i'm sorry two corner stitches the first And the second corner stitch, three knit stitches, one, two, three knit stitches, and then a whole row of reverse stitches, ten, ten reverse stitches, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. After that, three knit stitches for the middle of the work, and then obviously ten reverse one. Three, four, five, six, 
10 after the 10 reverse stitches 3 knit stitches and two corner and then we are at the end of the row 32 so I continue and I'll be back at row 33 okay row 33 starting with one corner stitch and one reverse and this one is hard don't split the yarn like I do here we go oh, I have two loops as you can see but now I well one reverse four knit stitches eight reverse three four five six seven eight five knit and then again eight reverse seven eight then four knit stitches two three four one reverse stitch this one is better and one corner stitch and row 34 with two corner stitches and after that one reverse one reverse five knit stitches one two three four five Six reverse, two, three, four, five, six, let's see, seven knit stitches. For the center and then again the six four five six and then at the end five knit stitches one two three four five one reverse and the two corner stitches i love it how the heart is building up from light red to the dark color it's nice okay already a full screen with the hexagon row 35 and row 35 starts with just one corner stitch and after that three reverse stitches find the middle of the screen one two three reverse stitches 
and after that six knit stitches one two three four five six three reverse one two three four knit stitches one two three four one reverse yes i have the right stitch four knit stitches one two three four and then again three reverse one two three six knit Six, three reverse, and we are at the end of a section. Three reverse, and the one corner stitch. The end of section 35. Okay, finished row 35, and actually finish the first two corner stitches stitches of row 36 so 36 start with two corner stitches and then after that five reverse stitches one two three four and five and after that five ten knit stitches Quite a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Knit stitches. Did I say knit stitches? I think I did. Three reverse. One, two, Three, and then obviously 10 knit stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. After that, five reverse. And the corner stitches to end the row, the section, I mean, row 36, row 37, and row 37 is actually the row where uh, the last row something happens, uh, I mean in row 30. Eight and 39 it is nearly all about reverse stitches and in this row something happens for the last time so we start with one a corner stitch and then eight reverse stitches where is my first one two three four Six, seven, eight reverse stitches, and then seven knit stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the middle, we have five reverse. One, two, three. Four, five, again the seven knit stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reverse, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and of course the corded stitch. So this section makes row 37. I will finish this up and then we make us up for the last two rounds. The row 37. And as I said, the last two rows are actually quite simple. 37 starts and ends with two corner stitches. And that's the only fun in this round because every other stitch is a reverse stitch. So we'll continue to the end of this section with all reverse stitches. And then at the end, two corner stitches to finish the, sec the section. So I'll show you every stitch a reverse stitch. For the last two rows and I will show you section one and then I will come back at the end of the complete row 37 because that's a little different than all the other rows but first all sections reverse stitches and corner stitches Reverse, uh, reverse, reverse. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Because of the fingering yarn, you have a lot of rows to complete before you have your hexagon. And when you work with DK or even uh, thicker yarn, the hexagons will be, will become quite large. Uh, I'm at the end, so I one too many all reverse stitches made and then the two corner stitches row 37 and as i said i come back at the end of the complete row 37 to show you how it works in the bind off row 38 the last row the binding off row i stopped at the same point as always one dark loop and two white loops at my hook but before i can start the bind off row i will do a little trick uh, the bind off row is just reverse stitches so every stitch is a reverse stitch and i start with the first reverse stitch right now i have four loops on my hook and then i turn my work again And do the backwards part for a few more stitches for two stitches more so that that I have one dark and one white loop at my hook that's the point I can cut off the dark yarn and leave a tail to finish it off and just pull it through like this we work the, the ends later. I will show you that. And um, I think this video was uh, quite long for now. So uh, I just decided to make um, uh, a second video about blocking and um, working all the ends, how I do that. So I just finish uh, this uh, hexagon for this video. So now I have one a uh, loop left at my hook and the little tail of the dark yarn. The bind off um, row, uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, every loop should be the same size uh, in this row because uh, when you join the hexagons together it's important that the sides are uh, as long uh, as one another they have the same length that's the better way to tell it uh, well you have that one loop at your hook you insert you make a reverse stitch actually and after that reverse stitch you get through the first loop as well so again 
we'll make a reverse stitch and after that through the loop as well reverse reverse and when you have a little oh and you have done a few you will find your way that the little the stitches here are a little bit the same size you see so you just continue the whole hexagon till you are in the end and then i will show you the last few stitches and we finished we are we worked our way all the rounds with the bind off uh, row i will show you the last part i stopped just before the stitch where my brown tail is out of it do i say that good well you know what i mean uh, i will make one one more bind off stitch in that st stitch before i will cut off my yarn like this and then we get the hook out of the work well we finished this beautiful beautiful hexagon i will show you after this shot um, when it's blocked and uh, and done uh, i will show you in a, another video how i uh, work my tails uh, into the work in a in a way that they won't uh, get out <laughs> when you use your blanket uh, I hope this video was helpful for you uh, to make a full uh, hexagon and uh, maybe you can add this one to uh, the Ipsa blanket uh, or maybe uh, when you, you can make a whole blanket out of uh, these uh, and I love do I love doing this so much that I made two extra um, uh, charts of two other uh, hexagons I will post them uh, at the end of this uh, video and uh, please let me know if it's helpful for you that I make a video like this of those two patterns as well. Please tell me. Uh, thanks, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you back in one of my other uh, uh, tutorials. Bye bye.